In a beautiful valley in the middle of Switzerland sits a small village that literally blew up one day. Just before midnight, a week before Christmas 1947, the mountain on the eastern side of the town exploded in what was the largest non-nuclear explosion ever to that date. Four children and five adults were killed, and over 40 buildings were destroyed either by the blast or the enormous boulders fired like buckshot at the community. 3,500 tons of munitions had detonated in an underground bunker causing the destruction. The problem, though, is that the 3,500 tons was only half of what was stored there, leaving another 3,500 tons of unexploded ordnance buried under acres of rubble, still there today, quietly waiting, potentially, to go off again. This isn't the only bunker that has exploded in Switzerland either, and as the years go by, the risk of more detonating only increases. Mitholz, with its population of about 170 people, sits in the beautiful Kander Valley on the northern side of the Swiss Alps. Strangely enough, it has an odd little history of disasters over the last hundred years or so. In 1945, there was a deadly landslide and flood that struck the village. Two years later, half the town blew up, as we're going to explore in this video. It flooded in 1987 and again in 2011, and in between, in the winter of 1998 and 1999, there was an avalanche. Less than a year after the avalanche, the windstorm, Cyclone Lothar, crossed Europe, and Mitholz was one of the worst places hit, despite not being along the path of Lothar's eye. Despite its alpine charm, there always seems to be a catastrophe right around the corner here. Though most of those disasters were naturally occurring, burying 7,000 tons of World War II era explosives here in a mountainside bunker was anything but natural. The Swiss plan of the National Redoubt, its defense strategy if ever invaded, resulted in thousands of these bunkers being dug into the rock around the country in order to ensure the country could remain neutral throughout the hostilities being conducted literally all around them during World War II. This defensive network required an immense arsenal to be warehoused around the nation, as well as supplies, food, and stockpiles of necessities in order to facilitate survival if they were ever being besieged by a certain angry little man with a certain angry little mustache. Midholtz was selected as one of the locations for a munitions depot and was one of the largest in the country. Everything from hand grenades and mines to bombs and artillery shells was deposited inside the mountainside bunker system built overlooking the village. Six chambers, each 500 feet long, were drilled into the rock and filled with a myriad of destructive weapons. In a previous video, I discussed how everything in Switzerland is built to destroy an invading army. The thing about building up a country that can be self-sabotaged is that you run the risk of those safeguards failing and doing so at very inopportune times. All across the country, thousands of bunkers contain millions of pounds of high explosives and weaponry, everything from bullets to bombs. In self-contained tunnels, they are relatively safe, with the likelihood of disaster being low but obviously not zero. As time goes by though, water, humidity, or leakage from the munitions themselves could cause decay, jeopardizing the integrity and stability of the device. The bullets and the bombs are less of a concern than the small explosives like hand grenades and mines, which could set off a chain reaction, which spreads rather than immediately consumes. This buildup of pressure creates a powder keg effect, exacerbating the destruction. No one is exactly sure what happened next behind the doors of the Mitholtz Munitions Depot. Whatever it was that sparked the disaster is still debated to this day. But just before midnight on December 19th, the mountain exploded. Something happened deep underground that set off a chain reaction that turned the entire wall of rock into ground zero for the largest conventional explosion the world had ever seen. Though no one is 100% sure what, something caused one of the munitions to go high order, thus setting off everything in three of the six tunnels here. The world around the residents here changed immediately as the initial blast swept across the valley, destroying homes, immediately followed milliseconds later by projectile boulders the size of vehicles being missiled into the surrounding area. 
Intermingled with the boulders was burning ordnance, which continued to go off around the town for some time after the explosion. What wasn't destroyed in the blast burned. The 40 buildings destroyed included the school and train station, and it injured 20 residents besides the nine who were killed. Today, an army of aid workers would descend on the town providing shelter, food, resources, physical and mental health services, but in 1947, it just didn't happen like that. There was some initial response with senior military and government workers visiting to provide some help, but search parties and support came mostly from the surrounding communities. In the middle of winter, they dug through collapsed buildings, thick snow and bombs strewn amongst the wreckage to find any survivors or retrieve essential items that may help those survivors. Over the following decades, the small village did its best to heal from the catastrophe. Small memorials were built and vigils were held. The facility was partially rebuilt in 1953 to be used to store pharmaceutical supplies and was considered as a location for a data center. But it wasn't until 2018 that the Department of Defense determined that based off their assessment, only half the munitions had detonated, leaving the other half buried under loose rock. By 2020, it was decided that the remaining explosives needed to be removed or safely buried in order to prevent another incident as those bombs, shells, and mines continued to rust and degrade underground. With an expected budget to clean up the mess of $1 billion and a 10-year timeline established to do it, the residents of Midholtz were told that the project would begin in 2030, go until 2040, and over the next decade, they would need to move out of the blast zone and remain outside it until the operation was complete. The government will buy the properties from the residents, as is common with infrastructure projects, in order to facilitate the relocation. Roads and the train line will also need to be rerouted in order to prevent other towns from being cut off during the cleanup of the cache. So now everyone is getting kicked out of town. At least everyone within the blast zone, should the remaining 3,500 tons go high order, for whatever reason it may ignite. The residents here who are at risk are, quite obviously, annoyed by this. A necessary evil, the country is essentially financing their forced relocation of the populace. Families that have lived here on the same plot or farm for literally hundreds of years are being told to pack up and not come back for 10 to 20 years. Not an easy pill to swallow in a small alpine town or anywhere else, really. A question that does arise, though, is what about all the other bunkers? Is Mitholtz an outlier? A tragedy that was caused by faulty construction or a lapse in quality assurance? Or are there essentially underground town-destroying bombs buried all around the country waiting for a spark? We know there is potential because another bunker exploded in 1992. It was built in the early 1980s. A fire was reported in one of the munitions chambers and a short time later, the entire complex exploded. The six people inside at the time were killed instantly and 11 others outside somehow avoided all injury. Unlike the munitions depot in Mitholtz, this one was 1.5 kilometers away from the nearest civilian structure, limiting potential death and destruction. Are these two isolated incidents or are there other bunkers holding explosives that are at risk? There are, of course, inspection processes in place in order to locate and isolate any potential risks, but freak accidents happen. And another question arises now that World War II and the Cold War are long over, and that is, does Switzerland even need their stockpile? Recent reductions would say that they are coming to terms with reducing their cash and therefore the risks associated with it. The way that Switzerland goes about disposing of unexploded and unused ordnance is, for lack of a better word, interesting. The standard way seems to be a technique of, well, dumping it in a lake. At least that was the standard decades ago. Throughout the 1940s and 1960s, the reduction of munitions by the Swiss Army was conducted by dumping large quantities of explosives directly into the country's four largest lakes. This came about after the accident at Mitholtz exposed an unnecessary hazard that needed to be dealt with. Ammunition, weapons, Hand grenades and even some of the ordnance recovered after the Mitholtz explosion were all dumped in Lakes Thun, Brenz, Lucerne, and Geneva. A total of eight to 10,000 tons of weaponry. And they're all still there. Salvaging any of it would be more dangerous than just leaving it there in the crisp alpine water. 
They are routinely monitored, though some of the munitions have been found to be only a few hundred feet from underwater gas mains and drinking water sources. As of right now, though, that's where they'll stay. By 2031, this section of Mytholtz will be a ghost town. With all the residents gone and disposal underway, the long, arduous process to remove century-old explosives it has the potential of being another disaster. Of course, all of this was determined prior to the coronavirus outbreak, which has sapped both time and financing from the relocation project, potentially further delaying the cleanup process. Only time will tell. Until then, Mytholtz and potentially other spots around the country are, for a lack of a better word, ticking time bombs. Check out another video here. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers for helping me get here. And as always, until next time, get lost.